morning. It is Wednesday, and welcome to all of God's beloved children. I uh, pray that blessings will be upon our study this morning. I welcome you as you uh, make your way into our room for our time here. Uh, kind of watching things. My phone seemed to be a little bit different, but okay, good, good. Starting to see people show up here. Just wanted to make sure. So, welcome. And it is about 9 o'clock and 30 seconds, and we're going to be studying Psalm 26 this morning. I'm going to use the ESV version of the Bible for my reading. Uh, we'll uh, start here in just a moment. We'll open with a word of prayer, but uh, greetings to all that are joining us this morning. Again, I'll put in my short little plug for sharing this video if you would like to, to reach a, a wider audience. I uh, really greatly appreciate that. And it's a wonderful witness uh, to our Lord as we share his word with uh, those around us. If you join me in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this fellowship in which we gather. A fellowship created by the blood of Jesus Christ shed for us. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the faith that we have. And we pray that you will bless this uh, time of study. That you'll cause the body of Christ to grow more and more. Did you help us individually to grow in our understanding of your word? And may we, by your Spirit's power, continue to be molded and made more and more into the image of Christ. For it's in his name alone that we pray. Amen. So the word of the Lord this morning is going to come to us from the 26th Psalm. Uh, as I said, I'm going to be using the ESV. If you haven't opened up your Bibles yet, I certainly encourage you to do that. Uh, short apology for not being here last week. I was out of town and was unable to... Uh, to be on at nine o'clock, and so uh, Pastor Lance, I believe, filled in for me, and uh, as without a doubt, did a fantastic job. So, starting with our reading. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in your faithfulness. I do not sit with men of falsehood, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar. O Lord, proclaiming thanksgiving aloud and telling all your wondrous deeds. O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Do not sweep my soul away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands are evil devices, in whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I shall walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. In the great assembly, I will bless the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. And as we look at it today, uh, some people look at this and we, what, we, what we find is King David is uh, being assaulted. Uh, he's not claiming that he's free of sin. I talked about this in another uh, one of the Psalms that I had done earlier. Um, it, it's not that he's saying I'm without sin or without fault or that I stand before uh, you, O Lord, as uh, free of sin on my own. He's not saying that at all. In fact, he's actually saying, vindicate me, Lord. In other words, declare me, search me, find me, look in my heart, find out if there's something wrong. And he wants to stand before the Lord guiltless in these circumstances. And what are the circumstances? Well, most likely Saul, the king, is after him. It's another one of those times when King Saul is trying to kill David. Uh, part of that is turning the people against him by making all kinds of false accusations against him, uh, maybe even taking some of the things that he's done and then twisting them and making it look like uh, David is doing something other than what uh, David is supposed to be doing. Um, and you may have had experiences of that in your life, too, where people have attacked you without reason. Um, They've taken your uh, good things that you've done and, and made them look nefarious. Uh, they've cast uh, shadows uh, upon why you're doing things. Um, and we as Christians are certainly going to run into that. Uh, we're going to get called out, especially as we make changes in our life and as we grow in our faith and we move away from uh, those maybe relationships that are, that are hurtful to us. 
um, and harmful to us, especially to our witness. Um, we're going to be called out uh, thinking that we're better than other people and uh, all the other things that people will say to us, uh, trying to uh, draw us back into the relationship with them and away from that relationship with God. And so whatever those circumstances are, uh, King David is simply saying, Lord, you know the circumstances. He's not really declaring himself innocent. But again, as we say, God, please judge me and find out whether I'm innocent or not. And he says, he talks about this. He says, prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind. I mean, David wants him to go right into his motivation. Why is he doing this? Where are his affections really at? He wants to make sure that he's going to stand before the Lord, you know, full of integrity. He wants to follow and be faithful in that. And he talks about for your steadfast love, right? And here he's appealing to God. He's appealing to God's steadfast love, his kessed love, his love that is uh, beyond our ability to comprehend. And, and that is that love that you and I also want to, to grab a hold of. We don't want to stand before God on our own merit, but certainly grabbing a hold of his grace and mercy and the blood of Christ shed for us as we stand there um, as his dear beloved children washed free of our sin and in these things but yet in the same way we also want to walk with integrity in this life we want to make sure that our walk and our talk match up as we proclaim to be christians and we proclaim the message of christ uh, we talk about his forgiveness and then we withhold forgiveness from other people uh, we talk about being kind to strangers and then we find ourselves being even mean to people that we love in our own family and circle so we want to make sure that we have that walk and that talk going in the same direction. And David says, I've been doing that, Lord. I've been following your way faithfully as best I can. Again, not claiming perfection. And he goes on, he says, and I walk in your faithfulness, right? Your steadfast love, your faithfulness. And that's the wonderful thing. I've been faithless. I've, I've uh, messed up big time. And yet God's faithfulness to me is without question it's always been there. He's always there to receive me, to forgive me, to strengthen me, to comfort me, uh, to give me all that I need. Uh, that love and that faithfulness will also call me out. Uh, he'll call me up and, and bring to light uh, things that I'm doing wrong, um, that, uh, that I can seek forgiveness and that I can amend my life and, and walk more in that walk of Jesus Christ. Verse 4, this is big, right? I mean, think about it. I do not sit with men of falsehood, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. What do your relationships look like? Um, I can say for myself that a lot of the people that I hang with are not people of falsehood or hypocrites, uh, and yet at the same time, I still sit with people that are. But I can't sit there as one who will... Uh, give sanction to what they're doing. I have to be willing to speak out. Uh, I was doing a little bit of study for this, and one of the questions asked is, when you gather with even family members that aren't followers of Christ, how does your conduct go in those moments? Do you find yourself following their path, or are you there really as Jesus did with the Pharisees and other people calling them out, and not in a, in a, in a manner to, to make disruption of a family event or anything like that, but you know, making sure that you, again, aren't following in a hypocritical way um, what they're doing, that you're separating yourself from their words, their actions that go against God, and again, being that voice of Christ, right? To, to speak about love and forgiveness and grace and mercy, but also to speak the words of the law as it applies in those circumstances. He says, I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord, proclaiming thanksgiving aloud and telling all your wondrous deeds. What a wonderful thing that is for you and for me to be able to do too, right? To be able to proclaim uh, the, the mercy and the love of God, uh, to give him thanks and praise, uh, even as he works uh, through us and accomplishing things. Uh, Ephesians 2.10 talks about us being God's masterpiece and also the fact that what we're doing are the good works he planned for us long ago. So we can't even take credit for that. We can't say, hey, look what I did, or look what I found. I found something to do to serve the Lord, right? Because God has given us that wonderful work to do. And so we're to proclaim him and to praise him. 
Now, that doesn't mean when people say, hey, thank you for that kindness that you did to me or something that we, we have to, uh, you know, oh, it's okay, it's not, nothing new. We can say thank you to them and, and give thanks to God in, in that same way. But uh, we want to make sure that we are telling people the reason why we're doing things. It's not about us and us being such wonderful people, but it's really about our God and him being filled with mercy and grace towards you and me. Oh, Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. King David loved to be in the temple. He loved to be in the very presence of God as the cloud would surround the temple and the presence of God was shown through that. He loved to be there in proclaiming his wonderful love for God and, and receiving God's message. What about you and me? Do we really love to be in the sanctuary? How many people have you heard say something like, oh, I don't have to go to church to worship the Lord. I can be a Christian while I'm out fishing and stuff. Well, yeah, you can. But again, as is said often, you'll never hear a fish jump up and say, hey, Jesus loves you. Or an eagle come flying over saying, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Really, when we're out in nature, we see the power of God. But it's in the church where we taste and we hear and we see the grace and mercy of God, the forgiveness that he has and the love that he has for us. And so we want to make sure that we are in church, right? Being a part of the church, coming together, gathering in this beautiful sanctuary or wherever it is that you worship. Do not sweep my soul away with sinners, nor my life with blood thirsty men in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. So David says, Lord, don't lump me in with all of those others. Again, not because of me in my way of living life, but because of your grace, your mercy towards me as I stand before you as your redeemed child, trusting in the Savior as from David's point of view that you will send one day, but you and I we're blessed to know the name of our Savior. We're blessed to know the precious name of Jesus Christ and how wonderful that is for you and for me. And so we're asking the same thing. Lord, don't sweep me away. Let the blood of Christ cover me and may all of my sins be washed away. May I, Father, by your grace and your mercy, come into your kingdom in heaven when it comes, even as you receive me in your kingdom here on earth by the waters of baptism, by faith, and by the wonderful reception of the Lord's body and blood in our wonderful Lord's Supper. You know, as we live in those kind of things, we don't want to be lumped into, and so we shouldn't lump ourselves in either. We should make sure that we keep our relationships pure and holy as best we can. And so moving on to verse 11, but as for me, I shall walk in integrity, redeem me and be gracious to me. Another reading says, have mercy on me. And of course, what is mercy? Mercy is when we don't get what we deserve. And that's why I think this, this psalm very clearly states that, that David's not claiming some kind of holy righteousness. He's talking about being redeemed by God, bought back by God. And, and it's nothing that David can do to make that happen. This has to happen from God's side. Only God can redeem us. Only God can show mercy to us, even as he shows grace to you and to me as well. And grace, again, is that wonderful thing where we receive the wonderful things that we don't deserve, right? We call it God's riches at Christ's expense. And so King David is asking for mercy. He's asking for God to redeem him. And then he finishes up with verse 12. My foot stands on level ground. In the great assembly, I will bless the Lord. And again, when we gather together as a body of Christ, we're making a proclamation that Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. It's there that we can proclaim in the great assembly. And the day comes uh, when, when we're called home and we'll stand with all the great assembly of all those who have gone before us. And we'll be there worshiping our Lord and proclaiming uh, his greatness, his holiness, uh, his, his wonderful love. And we're going to be there for eternity. And that's what you and I have going for us, is that wonderful assurance that we have God's forgiveness, his grace, his mercy. We have his abundance of love. We have his guidance. We have all of these things. But all of those things don't mean that we won't be attacked. 
it doesn't mean that life's going to go easy and smooth for us. In fact, quite the opposite. Uh, it means it's going to be hard and rough and tough, and we're going to have all kinds of moments in our life where we might start to wonder if God has given up on us. But he hasn't, and he never will. Jesus is our good shepherd. He is the one who looks for us, walks with us, the one who guides us, gives us everything that we need. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining me this morning. I'll close with a word of prayer here in just a second. But uh, I just thank you. And again, sorry I wasn't here last week. Uh, I was at a conference and uh, just uh, wanted to let you know that I missed being here. And so I call it last week a week without a Wednesday because, well, I wasn't here. So anyway, if you would join me in closing prayer. Gracious Lord, thank you again. Thank you for all that you do for us, all that you've done for us, and all that you will do for us in the future. You guide us, you direct us, you bless us. You've given your son to die for us while we were yet sinners. And even though we still sin, yet you wash us clean, Father. You speak us clean, and you love us. And you continue to build us up into the image of our beloved Savior as we walk as your dear children by faith, given to us by the Holy Spirit, kept in us by the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that will help us, Father, all the days of our lives until that day you call us home. May we give you thanks and praise through Christ, in whose name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Have a blessed week. I know I'm a little bit long here today, but uh, these 12 verses just uh, demanded just a little bit of extra time. So you have a great and wonderful day, and we will see you next Wednesday, Lord willing and blessing.